Hello everyone. Uh, in this video I would like to show you how to create a very simple lab uh, using a Google Cloud infrastructure. In this lab um, we are going to learn and train how to operate basic functions of Microsoft Active Directory using Windows 2016 Server. What we are going to do, we are going to create a domain for bluetilespin.com. Uh, we are going to create uh, two servers. We are going to create server called DC01 and we are going to create server called SRV01. Uh, DC01 is going to be our domain controller and DNS and the file server. Uh, server01 uh, it is going to be a member server that means this server is not going to host Active Directory services. Uh, during the video, uh, when needed, we'll be recording additional details about the elements of the infrastructure here uh, using those uh, nodes. So at the moment, um, I've entered into nodes that it, uh, the server will be called DC01. It's going to have a static internal IP address. It's going to host DNS server. It's going to be Active Directory Domain Controller. And later on, it will be our file server. Uh, in case of our member server, it, I've just recorded a note and I recorded that this server is going to be our member server. Um, those servers will be placed inside internal virtual network in Google Cloud infrastructure and via firewall it will be connected to the internet where we will be able to connect to it using RDP connection. Okay, so let's start uh, building our infrastructure. Uh, I'm going to build those two servers using um, the Google Cloud console. So uh, I'm connected to Google Cloud Platform. Uh, I'm using a test account um, here. So I have allocated test um, uh, allowance here. Uh, in Google Cloud Platform, I'm in Compute Engine uh, VM instances. Uh, because at the moment I don't have any machine, I will create um, a new virtual machine. Uh, first, I have to name it. I'm going to name it exactly as we have planned on our diagram, so it will be DC01. Uh, the names of the instances in a Google Cloud Platform, they need to be lowercase. Uh, I select a zone. Uh, at this stage, this default zone uh, is okay um, for me and um, I have to specify what size of the virtual machine I'm going to use. Uh, now, because it is, it is going to be, uh, because it's going to be domain controller, uh, I would actually prefer uh, to have a little bit more uh, resources here. I'm going to allocate uh, two virtual CPUs and uh, seven and a half gigabytes of RAM. Um, and uh, here I have to specify what type of operating system I'm going to use. Uh, as we said before, we are going to use Windows 2016 um, and I'm going to use Windows 2016 data center uh, and I'm selecting the one with desktop experience. This is important because I want to have a full uh, graphical interface. Um, now it is important as well to select SSD persistent disk. Uh, the reason why I'm selecting SSD instead of standard disk, um, uh, the performance of the machine which be, will be much better. It will be easier to work. So uh, at the moment I can uh, click select. Uh, there's a couple of other things what I need to do here. Uh, um, <clears throat> Uh, you can see here how much this machine is going to cost per month. Uh, now, it is going to be only our lab. It will run for a couple of hours. Uh, however, in the lab scenario, we can do something else here to reduce this cost. Uh, there is a link below, Management Disk Networking. I can go here, and on the Management tab below, there is an option which is called Preemptibility. Uh, that basically means that Google can uh, restart this machine within 24 hours. Now, it's not recommended for production environment, however, in a test lab environment uh, we can reduce uh, our cost and use uh, our test allowance a little bit more wisely. So, uh, this is okay with me here. Now, there's something else what I have to do. When I go back to our diagram, um, this machine is going to be a domain controller and it's going to be a DNS server as well. That means that other servers uh, 
would need to contact it from time to time for name resolution. As a result, I'm going to assign this server with static internal IP address. I don't want internal IP address to change. So I'm going back to my console. And here I have a networking tab. So I can click networking. And there is only one network interface here. So I'm going to click. Uh, it will be my default network. A primary internal IP address at the moment is set to ephemeral. Uh, that means it may um, it may change. So um, I don't want to do it. Uh, I'm going to reserve static IP address. I give it a name. TC01. Uh, the name already exists. Um, uh, so I will use this uh, other name which I uh, which I have. Uh, if you create it for uh, the first time, you can give it a name, make sure that this name doesn't exist, and uh, then you will be able to click um, uh, Reserve, and that will reserve uh, the name for you. Um, in my case, I'm going to select the name uh, DC01. Please remember, if you don't have an IP address created yet, uh, you can just uh, use Reserve Static IP and uh, create this um, address for you. So I'm using, um, I'm going to use this um, this address here. And I can click um, done here. So I've reserved um, uh, the address and I can click uh, create. <clears throat> when uh, Google is building uh, this machine for us, we can see the external IP has been allocated, internal IP uh, has been allocated, and the machine very quickly it's um, operational at the moment. Uh, I'm going to create um, another machine. So going back to our uh, diagram, I've created DC01. I have to create SRV01 because it will be another server which I'm going to use. This will be just a member server. It doesn't have um, any services on it. Uh, I will be connecting it later on to, um, to Active Directory. So I'm going back. I can create an instance. Again, give it a name. SRV01. Uh, I'm leaving the same zone. Uh, I'm changing size to a little bit bigger. And I have to change the operating system. So as before, I'm selecting here Windows 2016 Data Center and the important that I select the one with desktop experience. And the same, I'm changing to SSD disks. It will be a little bit faster. Okay. Uh, now, we remember uh, also that we are going to select Enable Preemptibility uh, to reduce uh, this um, uh, monthly cost. So I'm going here to Management Disk and Networking and uh, availability policy, I can enable preemptibility. You can read here, uh, when you click this link, learn more, you can read a little bit what exactly preemptibility mean. Uh, and I can click create, and at the moment, uh, my machine will be created. Now, um, our machines um, uh, are created, we'll be connecting to them uh, using, um, uh, using RDP. Uh, however, we have to reset uh, the passwords for a default uh, user first. Once we reset those passwords, we log on to the machine and we rename, uh, we change those passwords to our own, um, whichever we want to, uh, whichever we want to use. Okay, so what I would like to do, uh, I want to demo show you uh, how to change uh, default passwords and how to uh, connect to those virtual machines. Uh, you can see here um, this uh, menu um, icon, uh, and here uh, we have various ways of uh, connecting to the machine. First option is uh, set a Windows password. So I'm selecting set Windows password. Uh, it show me the uh, my uh, default uh, username which I'm going to have there. I'm going to change this. I will call it DM admin. Uh, at the moment, uh, the new user has been created and the password uh, has been created here. I'm going to copy this password. Password is copied. You can close. And um, I can download uh, the RDP file at the moment. So I'm going to download RDP file. 
and when RDP file is downloaded, I will be using my remote desktop uh, application to connect to it. So I will select my file which I've just downloaded a second ago, add it here. Uh, I need to edit it a little bit. Uh, I tell a client to ask me every time uh, for my username. Uh, now you can be using um, various different operating systems to connect. I'm using Mac. Uh, on Windows it will be a little bit different, but you will on Windows you will be using a remote desktop um, uh, connection. So uh, I'm going to connect to my machine. I'm ask for the uh, for the user, which in my case was DM admin, and I'm going to enter password. And it looks like I'm getting uh, I'm getting connected. Yes, and now I'm uh, in my uh, desktop. Uh, I will allow uh, to be uh, discoverable in this lab. That's the best option for me. So I'm selecting um, I'm selecting yes here. Um, okay. So what I'm going to do? I will reset uh, the password on server zero one exactly the same way. So first, um, set Windows password. Um, I don't want default uh, user. I create my own user. DM admin, set. Uh, Google is going to generate a default password for me, which I'm going to copy to clipboard, close that, and um, I will download uh, the RDP file to uh, to connect at the moment. Um, uh, you may be working on different operating system. You may have a different uh, client to connect. Uh, I'm working on Mac here. Okay, so this is my um, this is my server zero one. I'm I'm going to make a little change here. I want to provide a username. I don't want to use uh, default username here. So um, let me connect. DM admin and the password which Google have generated. Okay, I'm connected. Uh, server manager have, start, uh, have started. I'm going to uh, change my password. So one of the way of doing this, when in server manager, uh, you can click uh, tools, menu, computer management, and uh, under local users and groups, I can find my own uh, username, DM admin, set a password, and I'm going to set a secure password and repeat. Uh, please remember that uh, each time you set up a password, uh, that the password will be longer than uh, 14 characters, longer and better, and it includes uh, lower characters. Uh, uh, capital characters and numbers and uh, uh, special characters. Uh, those servers are uh, visible from the internet, RDP port is visible from the internet and somebody may try to connect uh, to your account. So please um, uh, have this um, in mind and protect your password. Okay, so just to uh, summarize what we have done, uh, we have created two servers in um, uh, Google Cloud. One is DC01, one is um, SRV01. Uh, I have, uh, uh, when creating DC01, um, I have uh, ensured that it has static internal IP address because later on I will install DNS on it. And um, server 01. It is just default installation. It will be my, my member server. The only thing what I've done, I've reset the password. So I create a default username on both machines. I've entered my own password and I can connect to those machines using um, RDP connection at the moment. So um, in the computer engine, I have uh, listed those two machines. You can see that this is your one ha internal uh, IP has a name. That means it will be static IP. A server 01 internal IP is ephemeral. Now please have a look. That external IP, they don't have a name. They are ephemeral IP. They may change every time when you reset machine. So your RDP client will need to connect to it. 
again. And now we will be able to start um, uh, our uh, installation of services and um, Active Directory. As